Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. Today, it's Thursday, the something of October. Not even sure anymore, the days are blurring together. Uh, it's a little hectic this morning, and I'll explain a little bit later, but I was uh, on a work phone call, and I'm already getting pressed to do some things. We're gonna try and do a little bit of chopping this morning before I head and go. Uh, I'm gonna be running semi for Curtis and the soybean combine today, but before we do that, we're trying to just get some chopping done piece by piece. So I'm going to go help Pat chop for a little bit. So why it's hectic. So Nathan is still doing the custom soybean job. He's got about 50 acres left, so he should get done today and hopefully join us tonight out at Long's. Curtis is running the 7088 and the 30 foot uh, soybean auger, auger head. Bun's going to be running grain cart for him. And Cletus, who you guys saw in last video, he was supposed to be running trucks today, but unfortunately he's in the hospital right now. He had to get taken up to the hospital via an ambulance. So uh, I would appreciate your retroactive prayers for him. We're not sure what's going on there. He just had trouble breathing. So hopefully he's doing all right, but I'm going to be running semi today because of that. No big deal. Stuff happens. So let's go chop through your wagons full. mile an hour and if the corn's good we'll have a full wagon at the end of the pass if the corn's good so what we are doing right now we are chopping earwidge this is basically a different think of it like this is a ration in our cattle and we made the, like the three main ingredients of our uh, cattle feed like the two main ingredients are silage and earwidge they're both chopped from corn silage is taken in the entire corn plant while earwidge is just taken in the uh, the corn cobs and the, the kernels and whatnot. Think of it like steak and ground beef. Kind of different nutrient levels, but you know, it just kind of mixes it up. So that's what we're doing. We're chopping earlidge. We have our New Holland FR9060 with a Drago Aero Cornet on there. And we're chopping into a Meyer 420, 4220 chopper box or 4218, something like that. It's a 18 or 20 foot chopper box. And I'm in our 190 Maxim tractor. And you can kind of tell how uh, how dry or what the moisture content is the, of the corn by how dusty it is in the wagon. If it was 25%, there would be no dust or hardly any dust. I guess this is around like 21, 22. And if it's uh, in the teens, then you wouldn't be able to see anything. And you want to chop earlidge around that 23 to 27% is what we like to do. So it's a little bit drier, but it is what it is. So we use chopper wagons with a steerable front axle as opposed to just a trailer. And everybody asks us why we don't use trailers or chopper trucks. Well, you can kind of see see how Pat's actually pulling a wagon. Having us uh, being able to pull wagons gives us a lot more flexibility. So we're actually going to be able to chop pretty efficiently, efficiently for four loads because of that with only two guys. So we're going to fill me in the first load while I'm going back to go switch wagons. Pat's going to fill the second one in the back here. And then when I get caught up to him, he's going to stop filling the back and switch on to filling me. And that way, he can always be filling me while I'm here because it takes me a little bit of time to drive back and get the next empty wagon. So that wagon he's able to pull gives us that flexibility. We wouldn't have that if we didn't have wagons. So even though it's a little bit more of a pain in the neck, it, uh, you know, as opposed to maneuverability and you know being able to back up, it's, uh, it's worth it for us. That's why we have them. So I hope we, uh, I'm trying to explain a little bit more about why we do and the things that we do. So feel free, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe. We only have about 50% of you guys that watch or subscribe. So if you would really, uh, if you do that, it would mean a lot to me. You guys are probably wondering, where's my sidekick? Where's Daisy at today? Well, today was the one day of the week that I am not gonna bring her up. She just needs a day just to relax and reset for a little bit. So she's gonna stay at home and Kristen's gonna watch her. So through those dusty windows, sorry, I didn't have time to clean them today because I didn't realize I'd be doing this right away. But you can kind of see that's what the earlids look like. Just a lot of corn with some broken up cobs and, and leaves in there. And cattle love this stuff. The silage they don't mind eating, you know, just alone, but they the cattle will munch on this stuff, stand alone all day. Just about full. So I'm full, so now Pat's just gonna spin her spout back to the, the rear, fill up that wagon. Now I haul the mail. 
This is some good corn because we didn't even make it all the way down. It's about a little less than half mile long passes. smoothest ride in the world but you gotta drop the hammer you gotta hurry up but always hurry up safely so i'm gonna dump this wagon and hook onto that one and i'm way over i'm gonna start up that chopper truck because i'm gonna try and fill up all three of these wagons while i'm driving and pat will fill the fourth one up that he's hauling huh that rolled the whole way that's why we run wagons because i don't need to drop a jack or anything i can just literally unhook the pin and hook onto the next one Easy as that. Start that bad girl up so she can air up. By the time I get back, I can hop right in her. So when I pull up to him, he'll stop, swing his spout over, and he'll start dumping at me. So he wasn't sitting at all, even though we have two people. That's why that wagon back there is handy. Two point eight three mile an hour. Getting some work done. Wagon number two is just about full. My job as a wagon operator is basically drive in a relatively straight line and try to keep the pipe right in the center. So way Pat doesn't have to do Move that tip of that spout and has less things to focus on. It's hard to do that while filming, so I apologize. When I film, I kind of just go all over the place because I'm not watching. It's hard work, but uh, someone's got to do it. These older tractors with no cap suspension is rougher than a fucking Bronco on Mountain Dew! Good grief. But I am going 17 mile an hour with a loaded wagon in, my de in its defense, but still. I'll park this thing out of the way and go hop in the truck. Oh yeah, that's a problem. The clutch spring broke the other day and Pat welded it up. Actually, it's holding pretty well. Now driving a tractor is a lot easier than driving a truck because the tractor you can see what the wagon's doing but uh, or how it's filling but in the truck you're much closer you can't see behind you because we got a plywood that kind of basically makes it a bigger box and you can fit more in there and you got to drive manually no like, like actually driving a car at three mile an hour as opposed to a tractor just does itself. Ah, good old Sterling. It's a nine speed. Let's get it. So Pat's waiting on me. So the real question is how fast can I go throughout the field without him getting mad? I'd say 25 is a good speed. I'm not gonna haul the mail like Nathan did in this video, going about 40, 35 to 40. The truck can do it and it's a much smoother ride, but yeah, he's only gonna be waiting for 30 seconds. It's not that big of a deal. And again, we're filling four wagons with two people. That's pretty good. So I'm having to manually drive with my feet to control the speed. At least you guys can see better. Too dusty for that. I do know the box on this truck is 20 is uh, two feet longer than the rest of our wagons, so I should be able to make a full pass with this one. And then I think that's gonna be it. I'm gonna go go bite tea and start trucking some soybeans. Rolling in the beans, they're doing pretty darn good. Pretty happy with them. This is actually some sandier ground, as you can tell. Uh, the beans, even though we had plenty of moisture just tells you how how sandy it is pretty much drowns it out to nothing overall the field's doing pretty darn good it says 84 about 11 percent moisture it's a beautiful day out winds blowing and the other combine is closer to home uh, we've had them split up the last few days just because we did some we're gonna be doing some late earlage for a guy and we need the combine head off that combine for chopping earlage. At least we're both rolling and 
Sounds like dad's doing good too. Here's a real sandy spot right in here. Goes all the way through pretty much up to the fence line. Drowns it out to almost nothing. Still gonna get what I can though. Radiator's about to plug, so I'm gonna blow it out. This stuff is dusty. Woo! So this stuff, when you're doing eelage, the drier it gets, the more it plugs your radiator, the more uh, fire risk you got. So you always want to get this cut. The wetter, the better. But just how this year worked. We've done worse years, we've done better years. So it is what it is. So this will at least get us through. Pat picked off the radiator, so this will get us through to the end of the pass, and then he can take it over the shop and blow it out. See all this stuff? The wind blowing this way, that's what kills the radiator. Yellow. Four wagons full, we're sitting good. So I'm at a, I texted Curtis, had him give me a five minute warning when uh, he needs me to leave the farm. So I'm gonna go start the semi, get that thing ready to go, do my pre-trip on that, set my backpack in there, and then go see if uh, Pat needs any help dumping wagons, which I'm guessing he will. Got the 1066 and the drill hooked up. Hmm, weird. Wonder what that could be for. You guys will find out soon. It's exciting stuff. We're doing some experiments and, sorry about that. It's exciting stuff. Gonna do a quick pre-trip and then hop in with Pat and we'll go unload some wagons. Now we're gonna go unload this thing with, with the loader tractor. See if I can figure this out. I've actually never unloaded at the front with this thing. Loading it out the front into a bagger. Well, that was fun. That was my first time doing that. So now we're gonna go park it. It's 12.30, it's time to eat. Got grandma's delicious, delicious dinner slash lunch coming up. It's called dinner because that's what she calls it. I didn't realize that the semi was loaded, but we do have that loaded semi. Pat and I are gonna go take that down to go to the Goose Lake bin to unload it. And I'm gonna grab some lunches from grandma. They're already sitting right there. Thanks, grandma. Oh, your tail is the, well, Curtis is the white one and yours is the other one and Pat is. The cooler? Okay, Thank you. So Curtis is gluten free or has some disease where he can't have gluten. So he's this pail that's labeled on the other one and Pat's cooler. Launchers are loaded. Let's head down to the Goose Lake bin. And that bin actually had a pretty major upgrade this uh, off season. And by this off season, I mean a couple weeks ago. So I'll show you guys that when we get down there. One more thing about this farm. It's rocky. Plenty of rocks, see right there? Huge rocks sticking out of the ground. We tried uh, picking that one out last year, could not get it. It's that far into the ground. Gotta have my goggles on when I'm doing this so I can see all them rocks and hopefully keep them off the head and out of the throat. But first I'm gonna start this tractor up, the old 5088. My great uncle's old tractors, my grandpa's brother's. Let it warm up for a tick. There's the cables. One there, there, and there. Those are gonna help monitor the beat and the moisture in these beans, because they're a little dry. Truck's unloaded. Time to get up to Curtis, because I bet Bun's gonna be waiting on me. Don't run over my cone. Curtis is just rolling on the outside around here. He's opening up this big piece. Well, this is where Bun wanted me to park for some reason, so I guess we'll park here. I'd like to go in the field, though it's a less dry for him, but hey, it is what it is. Guess we're not in too big a hurry in beans with one combine. You got the chopper there, the wagon. He's gonna bust through here, and I'm gonna follow him. He's gonna dump into that one until we get down there where he can shoot into mine we'll fill mine up take it back go get an empty wagon come back hopefully you'll have that one empty they're full they're going south and we're north their beans we're chopping corn so. and there he goes so i guess i get to follow him through here dusty 
I know you can't see because I can't see. It's crazy. Hey, I can see again. Corn. Corn. Cows are either, either eating or chilling in the shade. Cool. Let's head back to Goose Lake. Throw you guys on that time lapse. soybean harvest and I'm not really in that big of a hurry so I'm gonna stop and eat my lunch real quick. Here grandma got blue beans, uh, pork roast and mashed potatoes. Yum! Milk, two waters, my favorite dessert in the world and a butter sandwich. Cool. Just got done eating. Only uh, six drops of uh, sauce spilled in this sweatshirt. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Just not getting to it. I uh, had to unload that truck pretty quick the last time. But we have the AGI SureTrack bin manager system on six of our bins this year. Basically the ones that are the best fit for it. So all four of our bins at home have it. This bin at Goose Lake has it, this 8,000, 10,000 bushel bin. And the big one at Jerry's, a 30,000 bushel bin. What this system does is it basically tracks and monitors at a much more closer level the moisture, the temperature, and everything else, and all the properties you can get inside of grain inside the uh, the bin. So it has this bin in particular has three cables that go from all the way down to all the way at the bottom, all the way at the top to all the way at the bottom. And what they do is they take every two feet, I believe, or every small increment of feet. It basically takes a sample and it can measure moisture, it can measure what, it can measure temperature, and other things that we need to know, and it reports it. To this to this uh, box right here and that boots it up to the cloud I believe but then we also have a system that will control our fan the reason why this bin was chosen is because the fan is a, an appropriate size to basically either hydrate or dehydrate soybeans so what that is going to save us money and that's actually going to make us money I should say because these soybeans we're putting right now are 10% that 10% is it has 10% of water in the soybeans the cutoff is 12.5% at our local elevator. So we are, if we would just sell these beans at 10%, we're leaving 2.5% of that yield, of that weight on the table. So if we sell our beans for uh, 13 bucks times 2.5%, what is that? Something like 70 cents a bushel times 8,000? That adds up pretty quickly. That's $5,000 somewhere around there that this system is going to make us. My well, math can be a little off because I'm trying to do it offhand, but yeah, five thousand dollars is what this bin system is going to make us this year. Because you know, when we're about ready to sell it, we're going to say, "Hey, hey, bin system, rehydrate these beans at twelve and a half percent." Done. It'll do it, and it can, turns on the fan when the temperature is correct is right. It has a, I believe that's the sensor that basically it senses the atmosphere. It's also got a sensor up top, and they talk to each other when the conditions are right. It's going to turn on the fan automatically for one hour, four hours a day, however long it takes to get those beans to the right uh, moisture. And if the conditions aren't right, it'll shut it off. So it's as easy and as simple as that. And we're really excited to have it. So AGI, thank you for setting us up with this. We're looking forward to trying it out and, and maximizing our potential and our income with this. I'll link it down below if you guys are curious. So like I said, we are leaving money on the table by not having this system. Like I said, that's two and a half percent we're gonna gain just like that. So it's really easy. Granted, this system does cost. I forget exactly how much we're paying for it. We're looking forward to trying it out. I really think it's gonna work. I believe in the system. And it honestly will help protect bin failures as well. Because you guys remember a card to this video right here where we put a new wet bin up? Well, the reason we had to do that is because we didn't realize that some of our corn was getting hot. And when, it, when we took it out, some of the corn stuck to the wall and, so, and bins you have to load evenly because it's a very thin material. If you don't load it evenly, if you put a side load on it, it'll crinkle and that's exactly what happened to our wet bin. So we're also hoping the system will save that as well. All right, time to get back to my job. Chopping corn, chopping corn. Wow, other than blowing your ears off, that is pretty handy because all it is is running a hydraulic motor to those two wheels to swing it in and out. It's handy, but it's loud. At least this version is.
got Pat in there and the butt man here. Is that stuff right there? That's poop. That dump truck right there is dumping it. I'm guessing they're hauling poop from somewhere and it smells like pig poop. They're hauling it from somewhere obviously and they're gonna spread it on these fields, but man, does it reek. Yeah, that smells like poop. Oh, there's a Massey. Nice. Oh, look at this unit. Tandem truck pulling a gravity wagon. Cool. Very cool. So I lied, he's almost got this field whipped. Give it a couple more hours and he'll be done. He's just got everything from this hilltop over. So maybe 20 acres left. Hi cows. Hello. So I got about 20 minutes before I get filled again. So I'm gonna walk over. A, see if I can get a little footage for you. B, go ahead and hook the pickup up to the header cart because he's only got about 15, <clears throat> excuse me, 15 acres left until he's ready to move. So they'll be moving here shortly. So might as well get it ready for him. They put the cross back up. Nice. Used to be out in the middle of the field and a complete pain in the butt to farm around. So we had them take it down and they put it back up. Nice. Let's drive over and get a little footage and ride with Curtis for a little bit. What do you say? I like it. Thanks, cool. Appreciate you saying that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that Cummins engine in that K7088 just rolls coal all day long. It's awesome. foot auger head right now if you listen you'll hear beans hitting the windshield that's just kind of the uh, downside of running an auger we got to run it real way down in there it's kind of feed it feed it in but when we do that it pre threshes the beans out especially being this dry hey bun's doing pretty good stayed in one spot at least but with like Nathan's Draper, wouldn't have to do that. So honestly, we're thinking Draper's definitely saving us money this year. Just about a full load. That one will fill me up. Uh, you're full, so you're good to dump. 